I'm going to record this because I've been wanting to record one of our discussions for a while, but this is about Tales of Arise. And me, me at first, not liking the story as much as people probably think I should be liking it, and then me discovering that I actually like it a lot more, and here's why. You ready for this, Joey? Okay. You ready for this? You awake? <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I'm awake. I'm listening. Okay. What up? Okay, so to really get into the idea of why I like this mo- one, I have to talk about Tales of Symphonia. Have you played Tales of Symphonia? I've played almost every Tales game. That's good. Okay, so what's the main theme of Tales of Symphonia? Uh, Tales of Symphonia is kind of a thing of dealing with belief in... Joey? What the fuck is that sound effect? Oh, fuck. (laughs) I'm like, why is there a Star Wars theme in the background? It's because I was idling on it. Sorry. Um, I mean, it's, it's futility is what I see it as. Futility? Yeah, it's a it's a theme of it's it's tragic, but that's what I think it's about is about futility. Symphonia? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I see it as. And Right. And real dis- here's what I see it as. Okay. So real quick, the four pillars of uh writing are um plot, setting, theme, and character, right? Very important when writing out your story, okay? Those four things, right? Now, some ones are stronger than others, and depending on what we're talking about, right? But uh, for Tales games, usually the most important one of the four is theme. So that's why I bring this up. For Tales games, it's usually the theme, and the other three yeah. things feed into theme, is how Tales, the best Tales plots are usually written. <laughs> So, for me, the uh, Symphonia's main theme is oftentimes, I find, to be more, it's thematic on the question of the sacrifice of the many for the, for the few. A lot of things in that uh, game story has that kind of theme around it. Right. And... There's obviously a lot of smaller themes, but I feel like a lot of the smaller themes also feed into that one bigger theme. The needs of the many versus the... and sacrificing the few for the means of the many. A lot of the characters feed into that too. You know, you got um, Colette, who's like sacrificing herself for the needs of the many. Uh, Genos, who like feeds into the racism side plot. A lot of the racism is shown in that game to be like society sacrificing this few group of people for their own comfort and, you know, power. So, you know, right. needs of many. And, it, you know, Zealous, he comes in and he's like, oh, I've sacrificed my life to be this hero, even though I don't really want to be the hero. So he's basically sacrificed his life for the love and admiration of everyone else. <laughs> then we got right. the little and girl. So little girl. What- I- I'm going to go through all the characters here. Uh, Rain oh, usually yeah. just kind of fe- feeds into Genos' subplot, so she's not too much. Uh, the little girl whose name I cannot remember, the little pink-haired girl, she, she before the plot even begins, she has gotten sacrificed and had her personality basically erased. So she's someone who has gotten sacrificed for the greater gr- for the needs of the many. And then um, um, blue-haired guy, one of my favorite characters whose name I can't remember. He um he killed his girlfriend to save the town he was in, and he regrets it. Like he's somebody who's made the decision and has lived his life regretting it. And Lloyd, being the main character, uh, for times uh um well one thing early on is uh he kills one of his friends from the ranch who turned into a monster. So he makes the same Regal. That was his name. He makes the same mistake Regal does earlier in the story. And, uh, basically vows to never do it again. And throughout the entire plot, he is constantly trying to find the third way. So he's the main character. He's the hero. His main character arc is, no, I'm not making this decision. I'm doing something else. (laughs) And at the end of the game, he does something else and figures it out. (laughs) Right. And the villains, a lot of the villains are kind of... Forcing other people into the situation where they have to, you know, 
choose the needs of the many over the needs of the few, few. So a lot of the times they put people into that situation. But as you go through the game, like most of the human ranchers are exactly that. Uh, the nearby town sacrificing the people in the ranches for their own peace. So a lot of the villains kind of force people into that position, right? Mm-hmm. So, again, feeding into that theme and stuff. But then you get to, like, the actual... And they're like, uh, we got Kratos. Kratos is somebody who's on the side of the villains. But almost, like, as we get through the game more and more, we learn that he, he actually learns, because he even he kind of doesn't understand why he does it. He refuses to sacrifice Lloyd or, you know, the few he cares about for, you know, the good of his organization, as we learn throughout the games. So, right. like... He, he he's a good guy because he kind of refuses to make the decision similar to Lloyd does. But like Kratos learns that he's like that. He do, he goes into the story thinking, oh, I'm one of the bad guys, so I'm going to do bad things. And then he gets character development on that. <laughs> learns that he cannot, in fact, do that. <laughs> and then um, and then as we go, we learn the main villain, uh, Mythos. Mythos, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, it, 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 at first he sells himself as a guy who's just like, oh, I'm just sacrificing the few for the needs of the many. But as you go into the plot, we learn that it's all self-serving. He's sacrificing the many for himself, for the few. <laughs> He's just doing it for himself, which pretty good antithesis to a lot of the other things we've seen throughout the story, which is why he's a good villain and stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> And he makes it complicated. <laughs> he's the villain. So, so he, sh he, right. he kind of shows both sides. Throughout the entire game, he's forcing one decision. But as we get on, we also discover that he's doing the other decision himself. You know, sacrificing the many for the few and showing why that could be a bad idea, too. <laughs> so we got Lloyd, who's were, like, you, I choose neither. Third option. <laughs> so you were going to say why... Uh... Arise is, like, one you really like now. So, okay. The reason why I didn't like... Okay, so, now on to this. What is Arise's main theme? Uh, freedom. freedom? Uh, what is freedom and perspectives? Okay, what is freedom and perspectives? I feel like that's a small theme. Just, like, originally I thought, like, the racism, like, they had a massive racism thing. In my brain, the racism was, like, the main theme because it's focused so heavily throughout the story that my brain, like, latched onto that and, like, oh, that's the main theme. I... Right, right, right. But you pull that apart and you see on one side from the people that are the domineers, their whole thing is perspective. While well, on the other side, it's about freedom for the people that need that freedom. Those are the themes for them. And they, they combine to make a coexistence theme. Well, here's the thing. Co coalesce. Both on the racism and the freedom idea, I feel like it's not quite strong enough throughout the entire game for me to be like, that's the main thing. And for, that's why I kind of didn't like the plot so much, because any theme I, I could think of was not strong enough for me to be like, this is a good story. I, this is great. I Let's go for it. And well, then, mind you, be strong he, enough for you. Because, like, for me, it was it was incredibly strong. That was the entire purpose of, like, every single area was the people were not free. And when they were free, they made it be known. But were they really free? And then you come into perspective. But every single area gave you that from, like, whoever was there. Intensely, they pushed that in your face. What's the perspective of freedoms? And that's What's a good one. What's the perspective of available ones? But I think the actual theme, and I think this one fits just a little bit stronger, I think it's the inflexibility of ideals, I think fits stronger for Arise. And once I started thinking of like that, I'm like, oh my god, it works so good. Because, like, one big thing is that um, main character, oh my god, Elfin, god, I gotta remember my names, he starts off, like, absolutely hating Renans and being like, okay, we gotta destroy the Renans to get our freedom. But, as he discovers, pretty rapidly, that's not the right way to think of it. That's an inflexible ideal. He needs to change it a little bit. The freedom right, still... Right, so perspective. Yeah, perspective. He changed his perspective. 
So he changed his perspective, his ideal, kept it flexible. He flexed his ideas a little bit. He didn't quite get rid of the freedom part of it, but he did like flex the other parts of it to kind of fit his what he wants better. So, so basically, what you're saying is you just change perspective into a different word because it's the same thing. I guess, That's yeah, perspective. So perspective and freedom, because freedom seems to always be there for it too. So perspective and freedom does track. So yeah, kind of. Well, freedom is different than perspective. I will say that. Free freedoms. That's a different thing freedoms. in terms of the context. That means that like what freedoms are available to the peoples of the world at any given time. What ones are they? Because like a good example is when you go to where you thought the final boss was. Yeah. And like you see the people are super just broken. As opposed to people that are like, oh, well, nobody's allowed here because there are freedoms. You have two opposite sides of this and you have everything in between showcasing the freedoms that people will fight for or just live without. It's a major thing. Oh, it is a major thing. Same freedom. with the idea of racism throughout this. Showcasing game. the levels of freedoms like the racism is there. It's lesser showcase than, like, the way they showcase their freedom. I know, and that's kind of why I didn't like it, because in my brain I was just not thinking about that. But, yeah, and I do think freedom is important, but is it important for every character? <laughs> More so it than... depends. That's the trick here. That... Is every, if, if you give most characters a different variation, then yes, it is. Yeah. That's but why I always you think... give them all the same, no. Well, I think about it because, like, for me, like, Law himself was, uh, he was kind of free to do whatever he wants, like, from the beginning. He could have left, he could have done whatever he wanted from the beginning, because he was stuck in his mindset of, I hate father, so everything he fights against is bad. Everything he fights for is bad. He was inflexible in his thinking, so he got trapped into his situation. Oh, and there's also the mentality of being stuck because of the system pushing you into that position. And that's true. And that, but I think that feeds into my thing just as strongly because the situation you put yourself into can s stick your mind and make it inflexible in ways that you didn't think. One of right, them, right. He isn't put. He di he didn't originally put himself in that position though. That was his father, as you said. And the, and the society it was a little bit of both, in. though, because, like, once he left his father, he then put himself into the position. Because he was conditioned. That's the thing, is he was brainwashed. Well, yeah, brainwashed and, and conditioned, so that leads to inflexible thinking. <laughs> okay, the, 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 choice is, the choice is on him, but the reasoning is not at that point. At that point, the reasoning and, and, and all that shit, it's because of, like, if, if a cult leader does something fucked up, the cult made them do it. They did it, but the cult made them do it. Well, yeah. But that, that's where our mentality is right now on that. So the way I see it is uh there there is a way you can kind of fight against conditioning like that though. Alfin fought against his conditioning. The uh guys of the fourth area fought against their conditioning and then because of their inflexible mindset made it worse their situation worse <laughs> right so but like the point of the character was that he wasn't strong enough to right because like you can't like sometimes you just can't of course it doesn't matter if people can like well, you're not like people can't always be that person right? take it for somebody who gets stuck into unflexible thinking quite a lot it's not easy to switch your brain <laughs> off or well, and, and you're able to do it because you've had practice. But bottom line is, this is the first flexible thought that they could have possibly had in their true. entire life, and they weren't allowed to have it. Yeah, <laughs> because of their own brain and the way they were built. Because that—that's the nurture thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Nature versus nurture. So it it comes in as no, no. They, I I I I think that there could have been an alt universe where they could have switched shit up. Do I think that it would have made a lot of sense? Not based on how to tell Terry and they came, the area they came from is. Hmm. You know? Based on how Nazi-ish they were raised, it wouldn't make sense thematically to me. You don't think so? Eh. In terms of a Tales game, maybe in anime logic, it would have. But... Tales of Arise did a really good job of grounding a lot of thought processes. 
that it usually didn't do. Since Tales of Zillia, where the character had to deal with the fact that he was killing universes full of people. See, and okay, I'm going to stop it right now. I've never played Zillia, so... I'm going to have to oh. ban Zillia for now. I'm going to have to be like, nope, <laughs> on that one. Do you have a PS3? I know, Do you have I'm a PS3? sorry. Do you have a PS3? No. Then you'll never play Zillia. I know. <laughs> it hurts. Okay. We'll get... I, either, either guarantee you'll play Zillia or let me talk about it. I will I play Zillia at the first opportunity I freaking can, Joey. <laughs> you, had an, you had an opportunity at my house like eight times. Okay, let me put it like this. A game like Zillia is not a game you play for a couple hours at your friend's house. A but game like Zillia... Okay, play the game in earnest. Let me put it like that. How's that sound? <laughs> Play the game in fucking earth, cause I, cause am I really ge- grasping Zillia in just like one or two hours, Joey? It, am I really getting say, into it? <laughs> all I'm gonna say is, if you want to play it, this is what you need to do, right? You need to get a PS3 as soon as you can, cause they're cheap. No, they're not. You we just to... discovered that last time we talked about this. <laughs> they're oh, not cheap. Talked. They're actually like 150 bucks. That's pretty oh, cheap for a console. That's a lot for me, though. <laughs> that's dude, not... dude, you... I can't just that's drop 150 bucks. <laughs> no, don't just drop it. Save up. I'm trying. You're making a little extra cheddar now. Just put it on the side for it. There's so much I'm trying to save up for, though. <laughs> There's a long list of things, Joey. <laughs> it's hard, man. I know. Welcome to adulthood. It I sucks know. in America, and then we die. But just be patient with me on playing that stuff. <laughs> Oh, that that's what I'm saying, though, is, like, you gotta get one, and you gotta get one. It, it, they haven't closed Don't the worry. PlayStation 3 servers yet, which is good for you. Well, actually, I think uh, PS Now on the PS4 has Zillia on it, so... Look up. Look it up later, okay? okay? That, that's, the if, problem if it is, does, every time I've I... tried PS Now, my internet just won't let me. It's just like, no. I mean, it might come down to the fact that you gotta get a better modem. I did get a modem like a couple months ago. Actually, I probably should try PlayStation now. Now, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, give it a shot. But uh, that that that's because I live out in the country. Zillia... Strong internet speeds are like <laughs> Zillia a rare One and unicorn. Two were my favorite Tales games until Arise came out. And not only did the combat, the combat's better than any in the series, and you can't tell me otherwise. That combat's silky smooth. I think Symphonia is like, still my favorite, though. <laughs> Symphonia is all right, but it's not silky smooth. It's still circle strafe shit. I like the circle like, strafe stuff. It, it, eh. It's See, rough. Well, I don't like, like Arise's uh, combat system because it brings it closer to Dark Souls, and you know I don't like Dark Souls. so <laughs> It doesn't feel like Dark Souls at all. It, it's it still... feels more like Devil May Cry. Well, Devil May, Devil May Cry, I don't like Devil May there's Cry nothing, either. There's nothing wrong with Devil May Cry's combat. In fact, it's better objectively okay let me put it like this i just when i start my combos i want to be able to finish my combos i don't want the enemy to be like all right well you have to stop your combos now dodge i want to fucking do my combos man (laughs) dude your combo you're not getting the concept though see what you what you're thinking is static the combo you're doing the combo you're mixing combos together to make your combo that is the combo you can do that in the previous games no 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 that's what a combo is why are you upset at that (laughs) That's what a combo is. Yeah, but here's the thing. The enemies do not flinch in this game. They do not flinch, which means I can't do my combos because they'll interrupt them constantly. They do. They flinch. Yeah. You have to use the right moves. They have flinch moves. Yeah. Occasionally, you can get the flinch move. They are recharge. I I have no idea what you're talking about. I can get them to flinch on every single combo. I can't. They didn't explain that one very good then. That's on the game. Combat's top notch. It's no, no, the, uh, the only best... thing I got for flinch is high pierce means occasionally the enemies flinch more. <laughs> That's all I got for how to flinch enemies in oh, that I mean, game. I mean, I mean, bottom line is like there are specific moves that certain characters use specifically. Like the, I don't know how far you got, so I'm gonna be careful. Oh, I finished a rise. Okay, the shield maiden can make motherfuckers flinch easy. I don't know. I just use Elfin the whole time. <laughs> Alpha can't make people flinch. I guess I was just it? using the wrong character. I have not. It it, it comes down. I I mean, th- this but is where you just thing. gotta bite the bullet. When I'm like playing Alpha, and it's like the enemies aren't flinching. They keep g- g- going through my attacks to hit me, so I can't do my attacks. It's you like, gotta mix. You gotta mix in more I, fire blade shit. The fire blades are finishers, though. 
No, fire blades you can use in betweeners if you want to. They don't need to be finishers. Okay, well, they never freaking explained that one to me. <laughs> I was using them uh, as finishers. Go into the th they did have tutorials for them. You probably just clicked through them. I did watch the tutorials. They're like, at the end of your uh, arts, use fire move. And they said, and I don't remember if they ever mentioned, like, they combo into each other. But. <laughs> okay, so you remember what I said before? Where, like, when you split off on a combo. And you make another combo, or you can continue combos through a separate combo. Yeah. That's what I mean when you can throw those flame blades in in between. That's, 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 I don't know. I think that the combat's just new to you. And it's, like, similar enough where you're like, I don't know what this is. It's just, it feels, it doesn't feel like a Tails game. It feels like every other action game ever. And it's like, well, if Tails is just losing its sense of flair to it i'm like whatever uh tails flair wasn't the combat i'll be real tails i know flair but was, i still liked it a lot it was the combat became dated i feel everybody like i feel like in bizarro though i didn't have this problem though <laughs> bizarro is dated along with zestria zillia so how is bizarro and this one different then explain this one to me well bottom line is bizarro just played like a classic one which is fine but here's the but thing i can looked, like it, circle straight not just circle straight but i can dodge on, and do want, pretty much want, everything i can do in this game hold on you want me to explain it right yeah there's not as much weight and emphasis on power in these techniques in uh in in bizaria i don't there think isn't. that matters <laughs> that it doesn't does. matter if i it can does. get like a 30 As point combo Jesse, let, me, and let me let me guarantee you for yourself maybe it doesn't but for any other player it does. Because, like, I, I'm more general player than you. Well, I did preface I, this by saying I just don't like this one compared to the other one, so... <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. That's why I'm, I'm giving you the introspection on, on the general populace on this. In terms of the reason why Dark Souls is popular, I'm not saying it's like it. I'm giving you an explanation as to why power and attacks makes people happy. So... When you see something get hit... And it feels like, oh, uh, which is what Arise adds that Bazaria does not have. And Bazaria does not have that. So, f first of all, I play Monster Hunter, so I do understand power and attacks, okay? I understand when I land my really big hit and the big monster, like, goes flying. And it's like, yeah! Right. <laughs> but you think that it only belongs in certain things, whilst most other people think that it, if it's in anything, it's amazing. But here's the thing. For me... For me, I also get a sense of power from just hurting the enemy a ton in one big swift move. And I get that in Basaria with my huge combos that can't be interrupted versus uh, in... The combos uh, that probably couldn't be interrupted if you knew how to play the game. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So many enemies are just like, well, they have a mechanic with Pierce where like most of the time you can't interrupt them because that's a stat so for me i was like the game seems to be telling me that it's a stat and a random chance whether they get staggered and whether they can interrupt you or not it, it's, plus uh, plus enemies are a lot chunkier in this one so i just didn't feel like i was doing a lot of damage even when i did get my combos off <laughs> I'll, I'll be real with you i like i i partially agree with the last point but the rest of the points i i don't agree with because like bottom line is we, the the full combos consistently repetitively is boring as shit sorry that bazaria is l fun to you and that's what you expect well what's for the, a combo system well here's the but thing like, the combos and the, the, are repetitive. Uh, rise has this too you build your own combo so if one combo starts to bore you you switch to a different combo right but here's the question are the like when you do have to dodge roll consistently doesn't that make the fighting more dynamic isn't that the definition of that no. Yes. That makes the fight more dynamic. Because bottom line is you can't just sit and hit the button. Okay. So what usually happens, because they have the art cooldown, is this they... Is why Dark Souls has better combat no, than most sh Tales Listen games. to me, <laughs> Joey. So for me, it's like um, you have your art cooldowns and stuff, right? So, yeah. like, you can only use so many arts, and, and then you have a period where you let the enemy attack and you start dodging them like a turn-based game, but, like, in real-time action. 
Right. So, so you take your turn to do your big combo, and then you let your enemies do their shit, and you dodge the shit out of them. <laughs> or guard, depending on what character you're playing as, or what the system is. You know the combat change, though, is inspired by, right? You know what it was inspired by, right? What? It's not Dark Souls, it's not uh, Devil May Cry. It was Yis. Yis? It was Yis, that really I haven't played popular yes. series. Uh, I recommend it to anybody that likes action adventure games. It's very fun. Interesting. Uh, it's got a singular main character throughout that you travel with them in different times of their life. It's good. Uh, I recommend any of them to you. They're See, you know, I think it would have been better than Devil May Cry. What, um, I think it would have been better if it was more like Bayonetta where the Dodgers are almost part of the combo. <laughs> That is something I would have liked for them to add, but the dodges, as they are, still slow down time if you get them perfect. First of all, you got to get them really fucking perfect in that one. That, uh, my, <laughs> More my so than Bayonetta. Ends, though. It's still fun, regardless. It's not what I like, though. <laughs> and I think that's the point I've been trying to make. I don't like it. Oh, no, no. You're, you're trying to sell to me that it's not as good as these other ones. but like I'm trying to sell you what other... I think, personally, I don't like these as much as the other ones, and I don't think they're as good. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. well, majority of the Tales fans that lived alongside you all these years disagree. For know. a good reason. And, and, and there, I haven't a good heard too many like people them. disagree, but then, yeah, I haven't watched a ton of videos on Tales of Arise yet. So <laughs> Tales of Arise has been getting universal praise. It's considered one of the greatest RPGs. That's good. Like, of the decade. So To be fair, that bar decade. hasn't been too high. <laughs> yeah, Persona 5 Royal came out. That's a pretty big bar okay. right there. I find Persona 5 Royal way better than Arise, but eh, whatever. Persona, uh, 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 yeah, no, it's a good turn-based RPG. But like I said, one of the best, right? See, I always thought Tales did a good job of having like an action system that was also partially turn-based. But this one just kind of is like, eh, it's not ter- partially turn-based anymore. It's just action. <laughs> no, because like it, it got kind of rough. Like a lot of people had issues. Like that's literally what every single person I talked to about it. Because I know a lot of people that play the Tales games. Okay, that's I had a fine. friend who grew up with Symphonia, and one of the things that they were like was. You know, I've, I've been playing since Symphonia, and I love the games, and they're great, but uh, they never transform the combat into real combat. It just feels like I'm I'm waiting on some shit every time. See, I guess maybe for like, me, it's just like, I like the slower-paced combat. <laughs> well, it, it comes down to the fact that you like your, your memory-based like things. Like, you like to remember what you remember. It's yeah. the same with, with Final Fantasy VII. It was the same with that. Like, e- even though it was an... Aff- be clear, Seven Remake played great, played great, fun game. You didn't like it because it wasn't turn based. No, okay. At first, when it was first coming out, I was worried that a massive change to the combat and thus a major change to the gameplay would kind of ruin the feel of Final Fantasy. After it came out, I was like, okay, they did a great job. But here's the mm-hmm. thing. Even though it's an action game, they kept a lot of turn-based mechanics into it, which is kind of right. what I want Tails to do. So <laughs> you're but coming out here with like Final Fantasy Seven change. And I'm like, so Final Fantasy changed in a way I liked. Well, Tails J- didn't. Jesse, Jesse, <laughs> you're, you're lying to me. You, you, we had a long, long form. Like I walked through the living room of my old apartment <laughs> argument. About how little you like to change because it just wasn't Final Fantasy. That was before it actually came out and I played it. No, though. it was out. <laughs> it was out. It had been out. No. You're like, I played it. I didn't like it, man. It didn't okay. play like Final Fantasy. Okay. That was probably like the first like day I played it. I was like, mm. My point here. But as is I played it more, it got more. <laughs> my point here is your wishy washy with okay. a lot of these games. Okay. But you Sometimes are sounding you gotta like wait. <laughs> Remember when I had that issue with Mario coming out for Odyssey and I had an entire issue with, I'm like, why are they putting them in this, in this environment? Why are they doing this? So it's probably going to be trash. And you're like, hold off. Just because it changes something doesn't mean that it's the worst. Even if it's what you remember. But here's the thing. I would not say that your worry was unfounded. I will never say that you're wrong to worry. You did. (laughs) That's exact. In fact, that's almost exactly what you told me. You're like, it's Nintendo. You have you're worrying over nothing. 
That okay, was you crazy. I will say that you're worried over nothing, but I won't say you're wrong to worry. That is <laughs> that, 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 that's two I'm different wrong, wrong things. But um, that's saying I'm wrong to worry without saying I'm wrong to worry. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't say it, so. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> see, my thing problem with Final Fantasy VII is I really didn't like the ending. <laughs> See, I think that it's nice for them to open it up to a lot of what ifs because isn't that the whole point of seven? Is that they have a lot of like content based on based around it because of what ifs. So it's a like, lot of content around what ifs and stuff. But how how should I put this? My I have uh so okay so. The whole first of all, I never liked the plot goes. I always thought they were kind of stupid. <laughs> they're they're like manhandling, forcing plot holes in unnatural ways. That I'm like, you could have found better ways to close these plot holes. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, it, let's let's be clear here. Ba- baseline right now, they're plot holes until we see the full story. Because that's my trick with the new Final Fantasy VII is that they have a lot of time to fill those gaps in in a in a in a convenient way but for right now they're a little wit wishy-washy you know what i mean but they still have a lot of time because they're still gonna have like two three parts right well okay and i, I want to discuss the plot goes because they're kind of important so the plot goes represent like their whole purpose is to uh keep the plot on rails right they yeah. and sometimes they do so in a way like why didn't Cloud stop Reno after you just defeated him in a boss fight? You just b- beat up Reno. How come Cloud can't stop? Plot goes stopped him. That's why. <laughs> Stupid. But <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, I'd love the re- explanation for that one. But anyways, oh. um, yeah. it, it's a multiverse theory now too, right? So like, well, couldn't that have something to do with it? Let me continue on to this. Uh, so th- at the end, you destroy the plot goes, which makes it, I, I feel like is supposed to represent that the plot is going to go off rails. You've destroyed the plot. Uh, you've destroyed the previous plot guardians. Now you're going to go off the rails for the pre next ones. So right. for me, that leaves two problems. Either a, the plot continues and just follows the original plot, at which point, why even have this whole si- different ending in the first place? Or two, you go off the rails, and then it's not really a remake, you're just making a sequel, <laughs> basically. Well, it, it's, it, well, it's, here, here's my, here's my asterisk to what you've said, because it's not just those two. Even if they made the ending similar, or the same, or whatever, which they didn't, it was different. I know. And uh, they've definitely uh, done plot points, and they're like with stuff with like that big and wedge, and right, maybe even right, Jesse's right. still alive. They're definitely p- promising. There's going to be some different shit up ahead. So <laughs> it's not a sequel at that point. Then it's a multiverse theory game. Well, multiverse it, sequel. My point is, it's not a remake at that point. And I'm like, well, yeah, uh, that's exactly what a remake is. It's not a remaster or a remaster. I don't know. When I think of, for me, when I think of remake, I think more like. Yeah, they don't always it. remake or remake blow for blow. I guarantee you, if you look through the list of remakes out there, they aren't 100%. I know look they're not 100%. Oras. But look I think Oras. the way they're going, I think they're going to completely change the plot. <laughs> like, we have, we like, can't even start to say they're going to completely change the plot. We can't even start to say that yet. We I can't know. even start. The major plot points haven't been hit on yet. Well, here's my biggest problem, and this is a major plot point that they have hit on. We've already defeated Sephiroth. We've already flushed his head down the toilet. He's not a threat anymore to me. <laughs> Except he is, because technically that could just be a vestige of his power. You say that, you but... You that, right? Okay, let me put it like this. A major, major, like, thing about the original games is that they spent pretty much the entire game building up Sephiroth. Like, right, but you can't build him up anymore because everybody fucking knows who he is. So why the fuck waste our time with that shit? Because it's going to be pedantic and stupid and nobody will like it. So people Bottom already have hype to fight Sephiroth. <laughs> oh, no, no, like no. They saying... already know what he's going to be. Bottom line is we didn't actually fight Sephiroth because we didn't fight the one-winged angel. But, okay, but Joey, if I make a Star Wars game, I say at the end you're going to fight Darth Vader... It's going to be, you're still going to be hyped to fight Darth Vader, even if you know he's the old guy inside a burnt suit, because he's that Darth fucking matter. Vader. But for but me... But also, I don't mind fighting him a little early, even if I beat him at a weaker form. 
because I know he exists and I know a stronger form exists. But not everybody does it. Except they do. Because Sephiroth is more well-known than almost any video game character in (laughs) anything that's not Nintendo. Here's the thing. Let me think of it like this. A lot of it is hype because even at the beginning, you they do a good job of convincing you that even though you're chasing Sephiroth, you are no match for fucking Sephiroth, even at his base form. So even his base form is built up as a threat. In this one, it's like, well, you've already defeated Sephiroth, gave him Reggie, flushed his head down the toilet. It's like, well, now his base form's not a threat. So when they're building him up, it's like, eh. And See, but don't you, but, but you're not understanding how it's a bait and switch. It could be a bait fight... and switch, but we don't know that. <laughs> Right, but you're acting as if we do. But here's the thing. If but, it's a bait... Let me put it like this. You can't build up hype until the bait and switch is told. So if the Okay, then, then, well, then my question here is why are you trying to put this in our head after only the first part? You got to hold off on all this on all this outrage over something like that because it's too early to say anything is anything. We saw what we saw, but we don't know if we and saw And I'm sure it's going to be great, but I think this is... Okay, so I may have misspoke earlier. I'm not, like... For me, it's just, like... It makes me worried about where the plot's going. I guess it is. Because another thing is... A lot of people are bringing up multiverse theory. And, you know, people... I, I've watched some theories. They pointed out, like, some of the things down... Uh, when you were running through the sewer. that had those, like, tubes that had, like... Avid ch- children characters in them and stuff. And I'm like, okay... But now is this getting too deep into previous Final Fantasy VII lore? Because that would be bad, too. <laughs> like, that here's, would here's be bad, question. too. <laughs> if, if they if they went more into the, the, the seed area of things, I would love that. And, like, if they told it in a more natural way, like, that's fine. If they bring all those extra stuff in a way that's natural and makes sense... That's fine. I just don't want you to, them to drop those avid children characters. Like, you already know who they are. We're not going to explain them. Deal with it. You're supposed to already know this. I'm like, but I've never watched Advent Children. <laughs> How am I supposed to know this? Here's I've my, never played Crisis Core. So anything, if they come up with, like, Crisis Core shit and they're like, aha, uh-huh, you're supposed to know Crisis Core, I'm going to be like, what? <laughs> oh, but 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 that's that's presuming that you're supposed to know something. Bottom line is, what if they're putting a character in there to make people ask the question, who is that, too? That's you know? true, Don't and just, that's uh, fine, but it just makes me worried because I know sometimes Final Fantasy gets up its own ass. They, I they, just do, they do, they do, and that, that's a fair word, <laughs> but it's not fair to say this is that because of that. And you know what? I'm not exactly explicitly saying is. I'm just saying I see I see the bad paths that could go down, and it makes me worried. <laughs> oh, I know, but that was what you were saying. <laughs> you so were I, saying what you said about Sephiroth, and you're like, we don't know yet. We don't know if that was actually Sephiroth or just like a clone of him made by Genova. But or here's shit, the thing. You know? Nowhere in the game did they explain he could be a clone. <laughs> they never they explained that to. once in the game. <laughs> they don't need to. It could also be one of those moments where it's like, what the hell to a new player or something? Because it was supposed to be for new people too, right? But if it is, then we've defeated Sephiroth and all hype around Sephiroth doesn't matter now. So Not really. If, if it's... That thing, it's like, well, we've already defeated Sephiroth, flushed his head down the toilet. If And yes, he did go one-winged angel towards the end there. He did pull out the wing. So, like, we've no, already... No, that's not one-winged angel. Do you see, have you beaten Seven? Uh, not all the way. I okay, know, then okay, I know he goes all God... God's that God form and shit. That's the one-winged angel form. That is the one-winged angel form. But let's, some let's people might not here. know that. <laughs> so well, Exactly, and that's the point. We can't argue with them until they're done, and they don't do it. Alright, well, I'm just saying, a big reason why Final Fantasy VII was good was Sephiroth hype. And if you don't have that, it's just gonna kind of... It's gonna become something completely different. Which, if it's something completely different, it is not even a remake at that point, Joey. It's a entirely oh. different thing. <laughs> no, it's a remake. It's not a remaster, for damn sure. But it, it'd still be a remake of some kind. I don't know if you made Sock the Hedgehog, but he goes slow because he's in a wheelchair and uh, he's actually the villain, but Robotnik's the main hero. Is that a remake or is that just something completely different? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. 
Uh, is that an extreme comparison that's not comparable at all really a useful comparison for this conversation? Or is it just you trying to put your, your cards on the table? The point I'm trying to make is, is there a line where it's not a remake anymore? <laughs> yes, there obviously is, but it's not on this. Are you <laughs> sure, Joey? You can't say for sure, Joey. <laughs> you I mean, don't at know. At this point, it's not. <laughs> at this point, it's not. I'm saying if they go multiverse theory, then yeah, you've kind of have. <laughs> At this, they've explained multiverse theory in the original games. That's a thing. So it, no, it's not. You, you read the source material before you play oh, with it, baby. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Bottom line is it's a thing. It's established. It's been established. So no, it's 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 it still could be just a remake in a different verse. And it could be something completely different that isn't Final Fantasy VII. That is what I'm saying. It, I don't know. It's what you're thinking it's going to be. I'm That's not saying, saying. I'm, I'm thinking for sure it's going to be that. I think it's also totally valid, everything you've said. I'm just worried because I see Except the wrong Except for path. the fact that you were saying that it wasn't valid a couple of seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was either, pointing like, out why you could be wrong, maybe. <laughs> Jesse, I stated I could be wrong, but I also stated that you can't say yet. What it is right now on this trajectory, <laughs> it's still on the trajectory of a kind of a remake. It's not on the trajectory of Sonic in a wheelchair. It's not. Okay. Not yet. Maybe later. I'm just saying. But not yet. The framework is for both a remake and Sonic in the wheelchair. <laughs> so well, Sonic in the wheelchair is too extreme an explanation. So there's no merit. To okay, use maybe that. a little too extreme. Oh, well, it's 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 a it's a, it's almost the polar opposite, which would be extreme even for one that wasn't a remake. Because yeah. that's like a demake. Nearly, but it, it, you you basically the the. That that uh that uh comparison point that was useless to the argument All right. that you were making purely because of the fact that it's kind of like being like, well, he's like a Nazi when he says something stupid. Okay. It's like, okay, that I'm trying to think of where the line of a remake of a Sonic game would be that's no longer a remake, but like just adjacent to a remake. <laughs> uh, it would be a game where Tails is the main character. Okay, there. <laughs> there you go. You made my argument for me, Joey. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. no, like, I'm not saying that non-remakes exist. Uh, like, like, I'm not saying that they don't exist. I'm saying, like, this isn't it yet. It could be. If, if they switch you over to Zack, Jesse, as your main playable character, that's no longer a remake. Uh, Let's be clear. That's <laughs> no longer a remake. And they showed Zach might be alive towards the end, so it's like... Mm -hmm. Which, and if he joins your party, multiverse still plays into effect. And it's it still, still a remake. Could be, it still multiverse. could be a remake. At the, it still could be a remake at that point. I don't know. I, like, I, I, but, but I kind once of... Once they change your MC. One thing I kind of wished I was like... I, I kind of wished if, like, towards the end, uh, um... If they were gonna, like, start changing the plot, if they wanted to go off the rails... They really go off the rails and kill Barrett during that one scene towards the end. I was like, that well, would have been you the know why, that would have been know, the balls move to really open up the future story. Well, you know what all these changes were for, right? These changes were made because these were what they originally wanted to do, and that's fine too. If that if, if this is that would lean more towards remake territory if that's how it goes. Definitely, this is a, that'd be the most pure example of a remake because making a game again in like modern era aspect with everything that you couldn't add to the original version that is the quintessential remake, right? Right, that's basically making the game as you wanted it to be back then, and that's what it looks like it's going to be because that's what they said they wanted it to be. So they wanted. Zach to come back through multiverse theory. They wanted you to be able to play as Yuffie in a small segment. All these things they wanted had to be in the original, but they can't fit it on four discs. To be fair, some things like the plot ghost, I think, is them just going back and being like, all right, that was a bad idea. Let's fix it. <laughs> well, no, it was a bad idea because they were limited. Remember? I don't know. Maybe. Like, uh, like as Again, I just said, they weren't able to fit everything. Like I said, sometimes Final Fantasy gets a bit up their own ass, and maybe that's not 100% the case. <laughs> I do th I do think that the fake ghosts could be good. 
They they could have been better. <laughs> they can be good still if they go the right way. No, you've destroyed them all at the end, so I don't think they're going to be showing up anymore. <laughs> yeah, we've destroyed the ones that we know of. Fair enough. We're only in one area of the world. Remember, there's other areas of the world. Uh, we'll see if there's more Placos. <laughs> what I'm going to say is the ultimate thing that they could do is bring back Genesis. You have no idea who Genesis is. Um, I kind of vaguely know who Genesis is. Okay, bring I, back I, Genesis. I have a vague idea of like the plots of the things I haven't played yet through osmosis of culture. <laughs> so they wanted Final Fantasy VII to be multi-choice, multi-ending originally. Oh, multi like a branching path? Yeah, which oh, would have been be fucking the cool. There was and, some uh, of those in the remake, minor ones. But... Oh, yeah. Oh, that was the point. Is they brought back some of them, which maybe gives gives us pause on, because one of them was they might bring back Genesis. One of them was you might be able to convince Sephiroth to step down, and you get a different villain to step up in his place. Oh, Sephiroth joins uh, the party. Was, that would be great. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that I ever heard that he would ever join your party, but like you just you make him a neutral, right? Well, that's the thing. Which, I know you said they wanted to do it like the original vision, but Sephiroth is such a popular character, they might like decide, oh, I will make that slight change. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I I don't think they'd ever really do it because it's in the story that he joined your party for a little bit, regardless, in the original. Well, yeah, but that was like flashback <laughs> shit. Yeah, but they will have those flashbacks. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I can't wait till the flashback where I get to play as Sephiroth, uh, Zack, and uh, Cloud, but he's just a regular soldier. <laughs> dude, dude, Cloud fucking sucks as a regular soldier. <laughs> he shouldn't have either. Apparently, he actually had the powers of an A-class. Uh, well, uh, Hojo's not perfect, you know? Sometimes he screws up and doesn't <laughs> register people properly. Because, dude, Cloud stabbed that motherfucker with the Buster Sword before he got knocked the fuck out. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe the real reason Sefi is so pissed at Cloud is his back was tired from carrying him all the time. He's you know? not mad at Cloud. <laughs> he wants to fuck him. Oh, yeah. It's 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 it's, a, it's a one of those anger fucks, you know, when those couples argue with each other and then they get all heated and then they fuck. It's it's so obvious <laughs> that like he just wants his dick, man. <laughs> but no, that's it's one of those things where like there may be a, a pathway that you could get to that Aerith could survive and ter and Tifa dies. To be fair, uh one thing I did notice uh from the original game is that Aerith seems to know the plot of the game already. So uh, I'm thinking like that could be one of the major changes is that Aerith is like, "All right, but I know the plot. I know to dodge." <laughs> well, I I mean, or what if Barrett dies cuz the remake of Barrett is actually really good. Oh, yeah. I love the new Barrett. And if he were to die, I honestly would be devastated. I mean, so I would argue Barrett that Bar Barrett's more the main character of the first game than it anyone else, really. <laughs> well, I mean, he's supposed to be. We're looking through the eyes of Cloud at this group that is fighting to save people. That's what they got right in the remake more and than anything. Everything, everything is Barrett's mission, mostly. It's mostly Barrett we're look, leading the yeah, charge. We're, look, we're looking through the eyes of Cloud, and that's what we were supposed Cloud's to be Cloud's the originally. side character, and Barrett's the main character, and we're watching through the side character. Of course, Cloud becomes the main character once Sephiroth becomes evolved, but, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Then yeah, they no. showed, like, the burning town constantly. I'm like, I kind of feel like they're blowing a lot of their load early. I think that's the one thing I've just kind of like. Or maybe they've made new ones. And, you know, if they made new loads to blow, that's fine. I just kind of wish the old loads still remain intact. <laughs> just a little I know. bit. <laughs> just uh, a we little bit. It's, we got, it's, we, it's a we, small one comparatively nowadays. Well, I think about, but I'm like, okay, so we sacrifice, like, a lot of hype for Sephiroth, like, build up for his power. To Somewhat. To... To, for what reason? So we could just fight him real quick at the end? I'm like, we could have just not done that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's to make him a looming threat that, uh, because this is a saga now, it's not just you buy four discs and you can use them all at once. But they this did that five previously. Thing. They He shows up, he wrecks shit, he shows that he's awesome, and then pisses off before you can fight him, and it's like, come at me, bro. <laughs> right, That's you the... can just use the discs. Like, in the original version, you can just push in the new disc and fight them in the same day. But in this one, it's more like a... It's... it's You gotta think of it more like, in, in terms of writing, making him a villain that you centrally see immediately 
is just as good a decision as if they put him on the sidelines because I, of how long term this is going to be. So and I'm going to flip this around. We already know Sephiroth exists. I think it would have been fine if we didn't fight him. I think I think this is the better way to weaponize the fact that people already know Sephiroth exists is that you don't have to fight him at the be- end of this. You can just be like, yo, Sephiroth's coming, bitches. Keep playing when it comes out. And people that would be fine with that. <laughs> that would, no, they wouldn't. That wouldn't sell copies of Final Fantasy VII if you couldn't have fought Sephiroth. They wouldn't have bought it. To be fair, it's not like you knew you fought Sephiroth at all. People were going into the game thinking, yeah, Sephiroth's not going to show up for tell disc four so i i 100 percent did, did you people really... were going into that yes i 100 percent thought that they would toss them in because of how they were doing it once they told us that it was a segmented based game series and i saw how big the game is i'm like yeah they're gonna have a lot of big fights at the end of these things and i'm betting you they'll start with Sephi boy and then the next one they start with the big bad of the of the seeds game hmm uh, oh, like the the Yuffie one, he's a big bad too. Oh, <laughs> but like they they they're they're setting up maybe these guys working fucking together, and I think that'd be good because they're they're similar mentality in terms of reclaiming the planet for for mother, as it were, and they have similar powers, and they fought similarly you know, I- powered people. I, I did lie a little bit. I did watch Avid Children a long time ago, but I remember, like, nothing from it. Just those uh, two people yelling mother a lot. <laughs> uh, they're ba- I mean, everybody who was born from Genova that's do, like Sephiroth do, calls do, her mother. Do you know where I watch Avid Children, Joey? <laughs> huh? Do you know where I watch Avid Children, Joey? Tell me where you watch Avid Children. I watched Avid Children um in our... Uh, that dude's nuts, and he doesn't know much about technology. Oh, shit, I'm recording this. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned his name. Oh! <laughs> oh well. well, bleep it. Bleep Ble- it. Bleep it! All right. He's a duck, and then just put that that over it. Yeah. Cut it and put it Fuck. over it. But, yeah. No, it's, it, that, it doesn't need to know much about technology. Also, don't say what class you were in. That'd be obvious. Yeah. But yeah, no, fucking Evan Children's all right. Like a lot of people blow its load all the time. Donovan is a big one. Uh, I I've tried to think of like anime game based movies that I've enjoyed heavily. There aren't a lot of them. Like I, I mean, I'm trying to think of what was I five was a recent one. Shin Megami Tensei Five. Nah, if I was to pick a video game movie, like I would have picked the Persona Three trilogies. Oh, if we're talking like a movie, oh yeah, that's better than Shin Megami yeah. Tensei Five. I thought you were just like anime game in general. Sorry. Yeah, and the Persona Three trilogy of movies was so fucking good, and it had no right to be that good. Like, I I don't know who animated it, but the animation was stellar. I mean, if we're just talking anime movies, I mean Miyazaki films, obviously. Oh, I'm not just... I'm talking video game movies. Video game movies. Oh, yeah. Think about that. Because uh, that was what was uh, all right. Evan Children <laughs> Sonic? Yeah, Sonic was actually really good. Yeah. I know. actually really like... I really like Jim Carrey as Robotnik. It was pretty good. <laughs> they, Dude, he definitely I think sold they them. cast Sonic right. I think the guy that was in there with Sonic hadn't gotten work in a long time, and that was some better work than I've seen from him. I, I still feel like they... Americanized the movie too much. They did the American. Here's the main character who's not the main character thing. Uh, well, you, you know, you know what Sonic was originally meant to be in the original Sonic draft, right? He was meant to be just like that. Really? That's yeah. Funny. The only thing that they got wrong was that Robotnik was supposed to be his father figure. That's funny. And then Robotnik gets like toxic waste on his body and turns fat, which would have pissed off a lot of people. Oh well. But yeah, no, I think it was great. It was it, it looked good. It sounded good. Sonic had the perfect attitude for what he should have. Oh shit. Uh, they treated the Mario him movie scene. They treated him the age he was supposed to be treated that's as. That's true and that's fine. I did like the Sonic. 
a lot of people make fun of the flossing scene. I'm like, I like the flossing. Scene. Detective Pikachu was fantastic. Detective Pikachu, I want to see, I want to see more Pokemon movies that are just like, here's an aspect of the Pokemon world we don't see often. <laughs> Dude, like the entirety of uh the one where the, have you seen the special where Ash's Pikachu is growing up as a Pichu and just the wild and it just that was, interacts. That's with the first things, episode no of the new season. That's was great. Dude, it's phenomenal. Dude, I want to see. I really, really, I, I had this idea after Detective Pikachu. I want to see a Pokemon sports movie where they play sports with a Pokemon team. <laughs> I want that to would see be nice. This shit. This or, would be fantastic. Or maybe they could make a Pokemon, uh, a Pokemon uh, breeder series, like a, a raising Pokemon on a farm. I did have the idea. Like this that. is kind of more towards the games that I would have liked, but I did think of one where it's like a gym leader who inherits a gym, and he's trying to like learn, step up to the gym leader idea. He's trying to figure out these Pokemon that he's got dumped with by his dad or something. And it's like he's trying to understand these Pokemon and come into his own in this Pokemon world. I thought that would be great. Just like this day-to-day life of a newbie gym leader. It'd be like, yeah, let's do that. We could even make it like a species of Pokemon like the darker dragon types that are like really hard to raise. But he's darn well going to do it. It would be great. <laughs> but, I don't know. <laughs> Just something like that with Pokemon would be great. Because <laughs> Digimon's doing that like... All the time, they're reinventing the style in which you digivolve and shit all the goddamn time. Like, I think even just in the fourth season, it's like, oh, hey, what if we made Digimon on Power Rangers? See, here's the thing. With Digimon, I feel like with Digimon, it's better when you go more ridiculous. But with Pokemon, I feel like the more homely and simple you make it, the better. So, with those ones, I think it's like, yeah. See, I think the people that really like Digimon World Try would disagree because that that movie series was really well received and it was really serious. I I wasn't saying serious. You can be as serious as you uh, want. I th- I'm thinking more like, uh, with Pokemon, I'd want more like the day to day life stuff. With Digimon, I want some more ridiculous shit, even if it's more serious or not. I don't serious. know, man. There are some Digimon that have some interesting lifestyles, you know. Oh, you can show some interesting lifestyles, but I don't know. Like, Digimon Power Rangers sounds better to me than Pokemon Power Rangers. But, like, the Pokemon sports team sounds better to me than, like, a Digimon sports team. You know? It's like... (laughs) When I think about it like that, I'm like, yeah. (laughs) All I can think of when I think of, like, anime versions of Power Rangers, I can think of Don Kenoji and his Power Rangers being made out of little anime girls. Oh, jeez. Dude. One of them kicks soccer balls really hard. One of them pushes people, and Don Kanoji throws the world's smallest spirit ball. <laughs> Every time I think of um, magical um, magical girls, I go into this idol series I saw, which is not magical girls, but I still think about it. Every time of these Yakuza guys who failed, I can't remember the name of the series. They failed. Uh, and got and their boss pissed and they pissed off their boss so badly that their boss dressed them up like anime girls, like fantastic makeup, so that you can't even tell. Them. And there's these hard ass yakuza guys forced to be idle, magical girlish people. Oh, so it's basically idle version of Way of the House Husband. I think Wesley would like that. Yeah, but they're hard the ass yakuza, yakuza guys. guys. Up as idle girls. Oh yeah, it's great. But, like, they hate their situation, but the, since they're such failures, the boss are like, do this or we or I'll kill you. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Where have the house house in, man? It's like, he wants to be a house house in. Those guys did not want to be idols. <laughs> See, I've been watching this anime called Far Away Paladin. I've been watching that one, too. I love that one. It's It's got a really good introductory five episodes. Um... Like... I, I have I have the, the trick I do with the most of the animes I watch where I'm like, okay, how are your first five episodes, you know? And it's based on Yu Yu Hakusho where they have the best five episodes at their start yeah, in anime. That. Have you, okay, have you watched Rankings of Kings yet? I have not. That is one of the most important animes that somebody with a disability can watch. Because <laughs> it's about a little boy who is mute and deaf trying to be king and 
It's it, the way it presents itself. It looks ghibli and childish as fuck, but the show will go as dark as it wants, as it needs to, to tell its story, and it is fantastic. So, would you say it's better than uh, a Silent Voice? I haven't watched Silent Voice yet, so you need I to watch judge Silent that. Voice. Oh my god, watch a Silent Voice! But I will say, is... like, Ooh. as somebody who used to teach disabled children, Joey, you might absolutely, absolutely love Rankings of Kings. Well, thank you for the little, little, little buff up for all the people listening. Oh yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll take a peek, definitely. Mostly what I've been doing is uh, looking for a uh, restaurant to another world, which I am of the mind is one of the greatest animes ever created. I haven't watched that one either. Is it really good? I keep hearing that. It's like, it's pretty good. It's pretty all right. I That's the it's... first time I've heard like such high praise for it. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's so good. First off, they don't over focus on, on, the, on the main cook. They focus on the other people who find the restaurant and they give you a bit of their story to help flesh out the world just a bit more so you can paint a picture. And they do it every episode while they just come to this restaurant, not to throw politics or fights at each other, just enjoy the food and learn to respect each other. Yo, but this... like not in a pedantic way, in a really, really introspective way. So that reminds me, since we're just flipping between animes we love, last season had Odd Taxi, which is about a taxi driver who um and a lot of the uh, a lot of this is just talking uh, about taxi driver who has random people come into his taxi and just talk to him about their lives and stuff and as he ta- they talk to him about his lives he slowly uncovers like this massive murder mystery conspiracy and it's all just from him talking to random people who get into his cab that sounds fucking awesome. Oh, it's amazing. And mind you, it is a lot of talking. It's a lot of just like, yo, let's talk and chill. <laughs> but as it goes you- on, it's like uh, that one of the first people that he, in the first movie, he uh, finds this kid. Like he, this kid's telling him about streaming and about, you know, things the kids like and stuff. And um, at the end, he takes a selfie, right? Well, when he takes a selfie with a, a cab driver... In the background, uh, one of the most wanted men in the world is in the background. It's like, oh my god. And like, a lot of stuff just starts linking together in this weird way. And like, he, that's just a minor character. But as we get into like the more major characters and you see how they get all mixed in, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't want to say too oh. much more because, you know, murder mystery type thing. Have you watched Midnight Diner? No. How about that one? <laughs> um... You know how I was talking about Restaurant to Another World? Yeah. So it's kind of like that, but this is a live-action uh, Japanese show. It's not a J-drama. It's not anything like that. These people come to this diner, this little hole-in-the-wall diner that opens up at midnight. And you see these people who who are struggling with their life or dealing with something they don't know how to handle. And, like, the restaurant will make anything that they – that. Uh, you want as long as they have the ingredients and basically all the guy does is listen and he's like all right okay well what'd you do about this and you get people going there like yakuza uh uh showgirls uh uh receptionists uh former uh drag queens uh university students porn stars people that are just in a certain position in life that may want to change their position in life. And it's it's really good. Leslie would recommend it to you even highly. Like, right? Midnight Diner. So good. So a lot of Japanese shows aren't too good at showing a wide variety of people. But the ones that are, are like really freaking good at it. <laughs> like, Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Like, there are two Japanese food, or well, three Japanese food shows that are on Netflix that I watch the shit out of. One of them Leslie doesn't like, but I think it's funny. <laughs> but uh, one of them is Samurai Gourmet, which is basically a retired salary man uh, going through different culinary establishments, enjoying food in his retirement, and stomping on these societal norms that force him to be a certain way. He goes to a, a European-style spaghetti uh, uh, restaurant, and he wants to eat it how he wants to eat it, which in Japan... You slurp your your noodles. 
But if you go there in Japan, you're not supposed to because it's considered rude. So you're like, oh, man. And so, like, he has the inner self, which is like a samurai. And, like, he just sees these visions of the samurai doing exactly what he wants to do, which is, give me noodles, give me some beer. And he slurps up the noodles and chugs the beer. And so he gets inspired and he starts eating like that. And it's, it's basically a showcase of this man dealing with the societal norms and figuring out how to enjoy the right re- re- remainder of his life. So it's very good dealing with societal norms. Cause we're constantly switching anime now reminds me of B stars. Have you watched B stars yet? <laughs> me and Leslie love B stars. Freaking love that one. I have not read so season good. two. I started watching it the other I've, day, but uh, like, I'll say nothing about season two. Neither will Leslie. I've, Watch I've watched the beginning, like the first like four episodes, but yeah. <laughs> Watch season two of Beastars. I know. I need to finish watching that. <laughs> watch it before Agretsuko season four comes up, and then you can watch that, because that's also really good. Oh, I haven't watched Agretsuko either. <sighs> so many things. You haven't, like, have you not watched it at all? No, I haven't watched that one at all. <laughs> you need to watch Agretsuko. <laughs> that that's one like, I hear like, is like the adult anime for adults, but told with... Uh, Hello Kitty characters. Yeah, dude, it's adult Hello Kitty. It's great. <laughs> I think it's one of Leslie's favorites too. Oh. Agatsuko. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's one of her favorites for sure. She's so ready for season four <laughs> coming next month. Oh man, speaking of seasons coming up, Tiger and Bunny is coming up with another season. Jesus Christ, I love I am that one. I'm so ready for another <laughs> season of Tiger and Bunny. Dude, Tiger and Bunny is... I, a lot of people like uh, My Hero Academia, one with all this world where a bunch of people have superpowers. If, if, if you want me to be like world where a bunch of people have superpowers, Tiger and Bunny is my go-to. Like, <laughs> I already told you about 600. Joey, you're whispering. Yeah. All right, well, actually, I think it's getting a little late, so... um. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to peace out. Tomorrow's, uh, I got to make a turkey in the morning. God damn it. All right. <laughs> Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. All right. Well, thanks for this discussion, Joey. I'll have yeah, we this got an hour out of it. Just mute mute the name and then toss it on, on your channel. It'll be fun. I just got to remember it's like an hour and 30 into it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. No, like just play a game for like an hour or so and just put it on loop or some shit well you were saying we want to do this podcast style so <laughs> that's fair yeah you mentioned podcast so <laughs> food cast oh are we are we streaming oh uh, we're not streaming but i did record this so <laughs> oh okay cool po- podcasts okay. don't have to be streamed they can be video. i always forget that i know but yeah all right i'm gonna peace out all right see you joey